We spend six months intensely hurting our bodies, damaging our bodies. What if we spent one month, even one week, intensely taking care of our bodies? I've seen so many different doctors, but none of them are giving me anything to resolve my issue. All they're doing is saying, you have a problem, you have a problem. We know you have a problem, you signed up for this. I don't think anyone really understands us like, like, like we do. That sense of brotherhood, that's what ends the day you're cut or the day you leave the league. It's like that door gets shut. Dealing with football players, I mean, they're usually 10 feet tall and bulletproof. And until they're in dire need of something, they're not willing to listen. I, mean, I, I was one of those guys. We're working with trauma and we're working with the head. It just for me, that was, that was the first thing. It's obvious football players can benefit from this. I invited four retired football players, five of you including myself, for a week-long cranial sacral therapy intensive. We, we've had these programs for many years and there's a lot of former athletes that have gone through them and benefited, but they've all been kind of isolated in the sense that there's no universal recognition. And that's really what the key for me was for this week, was to be able to get the evidence-based study so that we could actually then show that yes, there is something here. So on Sunday, we said, okay, if they could come in a good half a day before the actual intensive, then we could start the gold standard, the taking of the tests and getting that done so we can have everything in line for when I did the post-tests so we can have a little double-blinded study there and yet we know what's happening on the inside of that week. And we're going to do it again in a month. I know this, this work, especially when you get to the deeper aspects of it, can seem kind of hoodoo voodoo-ish. Um, and I have a little I had a little concern about the guys might have a reaction to it. Hey, thank you all for being here. This is a dream come true for me. I really love this work and having to go out to the intensive myself it really changed so much for me and it's something I wanted to offer to my colleagues and my friends and so I'm just happy to be Again, happy to be a part of this and looking forward to, to seeing miracles. I've been living this nightmare for 33 years. I was first injured uh, for the 49ers back in 81. I had a number of concussions over the years. I, I write down everything in my life because I, I have a very, very ma uh, major short-term memory issues. Um, 30 some odd years of ground ball seizures. I offer myself as a, as a, as a uh, Lab rat to all of you. So. <laughs> uh, because of injuries I've had and excess amount of certain proteins that build in your head, I, I become the lab rat and I get invited to a lot of things. With all the studies I've done, um, everybody wants to do the studying. Nobody wants to fix it. So I'm just excited to be here and, uh, and like I said, I'll be your lab rat too. So. Uh, and thank you for the name tags, because yeah. memory sucks. <laughs> <laughs> so, thank you. I walked away from the game in 1991 of my own recognizance because I realized that my body was no longer cooperating with what my mind was asking it to do. In the NFL, anger is an asset, right? You can act it out on the field, and not only do you not go to jail, but you're you're pretty well rewarded. <laughs> Yet when we quit, then we have all this stuff, this this way of being that we've fallen into or adopted, and it's now obsolete, and we don't know what to do with it. I want to do this because for the last couple of years, I've been watching this whole thing happen with the NFL where, where the head injuries, all that stuff is becoming more public. And when I went through it, I thought I was all alone. Smith, from California, I just need help. I've been through a lot. I lost my father, lost close friends. When I walked in that door, I left everything behind me. I was a people mover for 11 years. I moved people at their will. I go through things, I'm 
emotional, I'm angry, I'm hurt. I try to tackle problems the best way I know how. And sometimes it gets me in trouble. Some days I don't know how much longer I have here. But the only thing is not normal now is me. I just want to be normal. My parents may look scary, but that's from all the hurt and pain that I've been through. And I continue to try to solve it myself, not knowing that it's this many people that care. And I think I can touch a lot of people. Thank you, Rick. I feel like we're brothers again. I don't feel left in the cold. But with the help of you guys, and all your years of experience. I hope you can help me become that man that my parents would be smiling down from heaven. That's pretty much it. God bless you all. We are all manual therapists, but we are at the same time coming from different avenues of expertise in the manual therapy world. All these passageways have to be open. In, in osteopathic medicine, it's the, the idea again of what we are wanting to do is to give the body a clear message. It's been the sense of, you know, initially it's granular then. increasing circulation to the brain and so we increase circulation you increase the circulation of red blood cells the red blood cells carry the oxygen to the brain which allows the brain to heal itself there's these lesions which occur in the brain from this trauma if there's no circulation getting to them well there's there's not an ability to heal you know the body can heal itself from any disease and you just have to set up the right environment for the body to heal itself and that's what craniosacral therapy does Dr. Upledger will say, you, you go so far into the body and you will find a mind. If you go so far into the mind, you will find a body. You know, he will stand up and say, look at me. Where does my mind end and my body begin? Or my body end and my mind begin? Uh, when you look at an athlete, we talk about neuromuscular wisdom. You can see neuromuscular intelligence. They're brilliant at a neuromuscular level. really kind of came into our consciousness that they're dealing with a lot of the same symptoms that a lot of people with post-traumatic stress deal with. So we had been talking about putting together a pilot program for retired NFL veterans and actually Junior Seau was, was a big piece because he played here in Miami and there were a lot of fans here and some of our therapists when he committed suicide were just like, you know, we think we might have been able to help him. For me, Junior Seau was the turning point. I just was sitting and going, you know, this can't happen to another person yeah. because we have so much to offer. Just imagine how many other people are out there that we can get to. He did it for a reason. The type of player he was, he was going in first. The type of player I was, I'm gonna stop you from going in. These guys had killed themselves and shot themselves in the chest to preserve their brain so they could understand that. And I still, you know, I'm gonna have to get on the table to deal with this one. <laughs> you know, it's just, I had no clue. People outside the NFL, people that haven't played football, they have no idea what we've gone through and what we've done. And you can't really explain it to somebody, but you get together with guys that have been there with you and it's like, Oh yeah, we know. We know what it was like and we know what was difficult, what was great, where the pain is, you know, and we can all really relate to that. And the culture, the game just it just ingrains in your brain that you don't you don't complain about injuries. You suck it up. Real players don't don't bitch and moan. And guys carry that on when they're done. You know what? And, and it kills them. Their marriages fall apart, they lose their businesses, they lose their minds. And I'm with guys at different generations of playing in the NFL, 
and to know that they have mood issues, they have physical issues, they have you know financial issues, they have all different, they're humans. And to know that you know we're all in the same boat no matter what years we played. Um, I mean, it's, it's comforting. And yet how many years total? 11. Yeah, that's a lot of pounding. Yeah. I thought concussions were, were a normal thing. And uh, I really don't even like to call them concussion. I just say, hey, man, I, I hit a guy so hard I reset my day. That's what I used to call it. I probably have 52 helmets at home. 52 are cracked. What we want to be able to do with the help of Ricky Williams um, is be able to have some inroads into the NFL so that maybe they will say, you know what, there is something here. Let's go ahead and help them further it and see where we can go with it. We've all been taken to a place where there's so much more ease than we had before we got here, so we know even if things do get difficult, it's like we, we can see the light. Just like I was telling my teammates and my other players that I spoke to in Orlando, Ricky's on some different stuff, but it's not the stuff you think. <laughs> you know, think about it, you know, she asked me a couple days ago, mm -hmm. how your tinnitus, and I had to think, it's gone. But if, if I tell this to anybody other, you know, outside this car, you were going, you're crazy, which is a possibility there too. But I, They were working all over, really, a lot in, uh, in my hips, leg area, and of course up through here. And then they wanted to check my gait. Apparently, it's changed a lot, and it sure feels different. My whole foot placement, knees, hips, the way I feel my body on the ground is very different. It feels like I'm in a different body. So I'm an anti-energy, you know, I'm, you know, and uh, this has uh, kind of changed my mind and my paradigm, so. You know, I was drinking like this just a couple days ago, right? I couldn't raise my arm, and, you know, when we were out dancing last night, we were doing a little bit of this, you know? Um, this is amazing, too. You know, with the cranial work, and it's kind of like they reintroduced one another. You know, like my brain met my, my heart, and my heart met my body, and they all got along for about a week. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's bigger than football, it's bigger than concussions. It, it's, it's really about touch, and you know, during this week it's the physical touch because we're being touched. But it's really, you know, activating this this idea that each of us has the capacity to touch someone else. And and what really brought that to light was, you know, these skilled therapists who have this amazing perceptive capacity, you know, and to be able to see with their eyes. And I think when you do touch someone, you enable that person to see what you see, which expands what, what we all can see. Something don't feel right. It feels like I've been in a fourth quarter fly. They say something's wrong with me, or is it what they call CTE? But I really don't know. I used to be the fullback of the show. I can't remember what game it was, but um, you had your entourage and you're upstairs, third. Cowboy Stadium. I was suites. all the way at the top. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We, I walked right by you and your, your crew, and and um, everybody said, "That's Ricky Williams." I said, "Man, can't wait to taste some of that." <laughs> <laughs>